Theories and hypotheses, we all know them. Some of us know them from science and others from game theory. I was the latter of the two. For those of you that don't know, a hypothesis is an educated guess, which is constructed before significant research, while a theory explains something that is supported by evidence. Throughout the development of paleontology, there have been some pretty wacky theories that have been proposed, and some of them have even gained some serious traction. Now this isn't to say that some of these theories aren't plausible, but it's not necessarily something that you would think of every day. But what are some of the weirdest and craziest of them all? That's what we'll go through today. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host bringing you another video. As always, if you enjoy, then don't forget to both like and subscribe. Anyways, let's get into it. I think there's no better way to start this off than with Jack Horner's infamous T-Rex theory that made its way into Jurassic Park 3 and hit the wider community. This theory being the Tyrannosaurus Rex was a pure scavenger. The basic rundown of this theory is that Jack Horner believed that since the T-Rex wasn't fast moving, had an unchallenged sense of smell, its arms were too tiny to use as a weapon when hunting, as well as a combination of it not having too many teeth and a specialized, unneedingly strong bite force, that it would not have been a successful hunter. Now I'm not sure if Jack Horner had a personal vendetta against the T-Rex during the 1990s, but man did the Tyrannosaur need a solid PR team after that. Since the theory was proposed, there have been many studies which have been released that pretty much confirm that T-Rex was indeed a hunter. I didn't think I need to say those words, but yeah. Now obviously yes, the T-Rex would have scavenged kills when the opportunity was there, but for a creature that large and so greatly designed to be an apex predator, to only be a full-time scavenger just doesn't seem overly plausible. Like if they were unable to hunt that badly, then what were the Triceratopses and the Ankylosauruses compensating for? And many people still believe this theory to this day, due to the information spread from Jurassic Park 3. As in 2001, Jack Horner advised directors presenting the Spinosaurus as an apex macro predator and a T-Rex as a full-time scavenger. Although if that was the case, why was the T-Rex chasing the humans aka hunting them? Whatever, I digress. Although over the years, this misinformation has been getting corrected to those who haven't yet gotten the update. The next one is the dinosaur breeding lakes. Yeah, you heard that one right. The theory came from Professor Brian J. Ford, where the summary of it is that dinosaurs were too large, and hence they were forced to evolve in an aquatic environment. And because some of these dinosaurs were so massive, they would be required to reproduce in large bodies of water. This theory goes on to say that large dinosaurs went extinct due to the asteroid and overall change in climate drying up all these large bodies of water. These large bodies of water were important as without them, creatures such as sauropods were pretty much unable to breed as their sheer mass would cause them to crush each other. The only thing is that if this was the cause for larger sauropods and other dinosaurs to go extinct, then how come the rest of them followed suit? Though I will say the title alone of Dinosaur Breeding Legs is pretty funny, so we're gonna have to let this one slide. The next one is that dinosaurs had two brains. This originated from the 19th century paleontologist of Neil Charles Marsh. So yeah, this goes way back into the bone wars. While examining the sauropod Camarasaurus, Marsh observed that the canal in the vertebrae above the dinosaur's hips expanded into a widened canal, surpassing the size of the cavity housing the dinosaur's brain. Describing this observation as highly suggestive, Marsh, as outlined by Bouchdelos, referred to a comparable expansion in the neural canal of Stegosaurus in 1881, characterizing it as a posterior brain case. The brain is an enlarged ganglion at the front of the spinal cord, I mean, some type of worms, including leeches, have this additional enlarged ganglion at the other end of the spinal cord, which is sometimes called a tail brain. So we can assume that some believed a similar line of thinking for the dinosaurs. Although, studies have pretty much disproven this. I mean, we now know dinosaurs, especially sauropods, didn't have two brains. I mean, what is this? Godzilla? Although, I mean, you can't really say too much bad things about this, as it was only highly suggestive and wasn't laid out as a concrete 100% put forth theory. Now let's jump into caterpillars causing the dinosaur's extinction. Yeah, this is just getting crazier and crazier. In 1962, entomologist S.E. Flanders went so far as to propose a curious hypothesis, this being that the ancient earth may have been dominated by a proliferation of caterpillars. According to this idea, these insects voraciously consume the plant life, leaving little sustenance for the dinosaurs. This alleged ecological catastrophe led to a scenario where butterflies gracefully flooded around and then there was the emaciated remains of Triceratopses and Montosaurs and whatnot, depicting a very gloomy aftermath. 
However, the feasibility of such a scenario causing an extinction in aerial and or aquatic species remains a point to be well contested at the very least. I mean, how are these caterpillars taking out the mosasaurs? Hmm? Riddle me that. I will say though, it would be actually insane if it turned out that these caterpillars single-handedly soloed the entire dinosaur faction, as well as marine reptiles, as well as flying reptiles. Another oddball of the dinosaur theories concerns the Triceratops. This idea comes from the author and artist John McLuhan, who focused on different ways to reconstruct dinosaurs. He proposed that the Ceratopsian jaw musculature covered the entire frill and extended over the back. If we take a look at some of the artworks he created, we can see that it certainly looks odd to say the very least. Like what type of things are these Ceratopsians consuming to require such a muscular jaw? As far as the scientific community is concerned, yeah, nah. It is a fun idea, but when you think about it, the likelihood of such would be quite low. Going back to the Tyrannosaurs, one of the few theories that I used to believe when I was a kid was what was presented in Jurassic Fight Club. This being that Nanotyrannus was a species which would compete with T-Rex as well as take out their offspring. As far as I know, the fossils which were thought to belong to the Nano was just a young T-Rex. However, I still see videos to this day presenting it as its own species. Some special mentions include the original designs of more lizard-like being cold-blooded, slow, dragging the tail along. I mean, I can't really fault the original artist as it wasn't like there was a handbook showing exactly what these dinosaurs look like. I mean, there's even been debates to this day of what they look like. And I'll be honest, some of the artwork isn't too bad. Despite the original depictions showing them as scaly, I think that they aren't too shabby for first discovering dinosaurs. Another special mention is from 1868, where Edward Drinker Cope incorrectly restored the type specimen of an Elasmosaurus. Instead of placing its head on its neck, he originally thought that its head was located where its tail is, which you can't really blame him, as it wasn't like there were many long necked marine reptiles to really base it off. And I think the most odd dinosaur theory out there would have to be that they never existed. Yeah. I don't really think I need to elaborate on that one. I mean, this is a paleo based channel after all, so, uh, yeah. Anyways though, we've reached the end of the video, and wow, there have been some clearly odd dinosaur theories throughout our paleontological development. Some certainly hold less water than others. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to both like and subscribe, as well as commenting your thoughts below. I'm having a special video on the potential animal origins for certain cryptids in the making, so keep your eye out on that. Also, if you enjoy shorter form content, then check out and follow my Instagram and TikTok. And I hope you all have a great day. I'll catch you all next time. See ya.